Here's the truth. The reason your generated sites look bad isn't the fault of AI. It's the way you're using it. If you're still going into Claude code and asking it to build a beautiful website or make it look premium, then you're seriously going to get left behind. Today, I'll show you how to finally leave those boring generic sites behind and reveal three powerful methods that completely change how you build websites, plus some tricks to take your work to the next level with the most powerful coding agent available right now. Now, the real power of Claude code in UI comes from iterating repeatedly. They never tire, making them ideal for continuous refinement. There's a proper framework for effective iteration. It's also really important to use HTML files during initial iterations. They're much easier to modify than fully developed frameworks like Next.js or React apps. For repeated iterations, Claude code stands out with features like slash commands and multiple agent creation capabilities. But to effectively iterate on UI designs, you also need the right visualization tool. This is where superdesign.dev comes in. They call it the curse for design and it lives up to that name. It provides an interactive canvas where you can watch your AI agent create and modify UI iterations in real time. Previously, this tool had a significant limitation. We could only use the built-in agent with a Claude API key. You couldn't use your existing cursor or Claude code subscription, but now they've solved this problem. You can use their powerful canvas feature and embedded workflow directly with your existing Claude code subscription while still accessing all the benefits this remarkable tool provides. So first, let me show show you how to install Super Design and use it with Claude Code. It's a simple extension that works in both Cursor and VS Code. Open your Extensions tab, search for Super Design and install it. Once installed, you'll need to open the Canvas view. Press Command plus Shift plus P to open the Command palette. Type Super Design and select this option from the menu. This Canvas view displays all your designs in real time, allowing you to see changes and iterate immediately. You can also change the device types to see how your designs appear on various screens. This is really useful for testing responsive layouts. Now here's how to use the iterative workflow with Claude Code. To use Claude Code, we need to initialize a Claude.md file that they've provided. This file will contain all the context and system prompts needed for Claude Code to function like their native agent. Open your command palette again with Command plus Shift plus P. Type Super Design and this time select the Initialize Super Design option. This creates the Claude.md file right in your home directory. Now when you initialize Claude in your current repository, it automatically loads all the context from this file and acts like a system prompt for Claude code. The file tells Claude it's acting as Super Design, a senior front-end engineer. It also includes styling instructions for various libraries, font specifications, color schemes, and additional guidelines. Essentially, it provides all the information that makes Super Design an excellent design agent. First, we start with the layout phase for your app. I've asked Claude code to build the main home screen of an Uber app. I requested five iterations. Claude code updates its task list and begins generating the layouts. At the layout stage, Super Design uses ASCII format to visualize layouts directly in the terminal, eliminating the need for code at this point. This allows quick layout finalization. It makes the first layout, followed by a second with the search bar repositioned lower. The third features a split screen design with the search bar divided into two fields, and it also made two more. You can easily request modifications. For instance, if you like the photo layout but want recent rides instead of quick actions, you can ask Claude Code to make that change immediately. I selected the second layout and moved to stage 2, theme design. Again, I requested five iterations focusing on style and design language variations. This stage typically includes color palette suggestions, but I had already chosen my colors. I used a website called Colors, where pressing the space bar generates different palettes. Once you find one you like, copy the CSS and provide it to your coding agent. Claude Code generated five distinct themes based on my specifications. These theme options come from Super Design's system prompt, but you you can provide your own variations without restrictions. The results show five uniquely styled interfaces. One has a cartoonish feel and another features glass morphism effects. There's a professional version and even a neon variation. Super Design also includes built-in utilities. While the first two serve the agent itself, the copy prompt function extracts the design specifications for any HTML file. This lets you iterate, copy, or export designs elsewhere. You can also copy the design path for reference, though it's simpler to tell Claude code which design you prefer and proceed from there. 
I landed on this one design, but I needed to iterate on it because the color palette wasn't being properly applied. I returned to Claude code and specified the design file I liked, and then I explained that the colors weren't being used effectively and requested five new variations with better color implementation. Claude code updated its task list and began creating the variations. The five new designs showed improved color palette application. Some went slightly overboard with the colors, but that's fine since we're iterating, not finalizing. Among all the variations, one stood out with the perfect balance. It didn't go overboard and used all the colors perfectly. Now this is the design that I'll move forward with. I provided Claude with the path of my finalized design and instructed it to delete all other iterations. Now I could implement animation. Claude Code completed this task efficiently. The beauty of superdesign.dev is that it creates fully interactive elements. You can click buttons, type in input fields, and experience a real functional app. In Cursor, I can now interact with all elements. The buttons are clickable, the input fields accept text, and subtle animations enhance the experience. However, I noticed an issue. The button animations only triggered on hover. I wanted a mechanical click animation that would resonate with our design language. I explained this request requirement to Claude Code. It immediately began implementing the requested changes. Claude Code confirmed the mechanical click animation was successfully implemented. Returning to the preview, the buttons now provide that satisfying click response we wanted. Now that one page of my design is ready, I can ask it to reuse the design for other components and pages as well. For example, here I've asked it to create another page for ride booking, and it has gone ahead and created this new page right here, fully animated and fully functional. Now I can use this to design my whole app. With the design complete, I can convert this into any framework I choose. Through this iterative process, you'll eventually reach a point where the UI meets your vision perfectly. I discovered another resource called Animatopy. This site offers a curated collection of detailed animation effects that can elevate your design. You can browse through various animations and select ones that complement your project. The implementation is straightforward. Simply copy the HTML and CSS code, provide it to your coding agent, and it seamlessly integrates into your application. This tool is perfect for adding those small, meaningful interactions that truly enhance user experience. Sometimes it's these subtle details that make the biggest difference in how users perceive and interact with your design. Over on the AI Labs Discord community, we're hosting our first ever hackathon, now extended until August 11th. We heard your feedback and wanted to give you more time to build something awesome. We're also adding a $500 prize for the best overall submission, plus the top five projects will be featured in an upcoming YouTube video. So take your time, push your creativity, and submit your best work. Join by clicking the link in the pinned comment below. And if you're enjoying the content, make sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss what's coming next. Now, what if you wanted to implement your design with pre-built components? Let's say Shad CNUI, which is one of the best component libraries out there. It has beautifully designed components, and many sites like Superbase use it for their front end. The best solution I've found is that you need to provide Claude code with the proper context of these components, so it knows how they're built and how to structure them correctly. For that, I use the Shad CN MCP server. You can see that I've installed the Shad CN MCP server right inside Claude code, and I've actually been using a workflow with this MCP server that ensures whenever I implement any front end using Shad CN, everything works perfectly and nothing breaks. So, this is the usage rule that I use with this MCP server, and I've put this rule in a slash command. You can see the project structure right here. It's in the commands folder for the slash commands, and I can basically call it whenever I want. What I use it for is, first of all, planning out whatever front end I want to build. So, for example, in this prompt that you see right here, I ran the Shad CN prompt and told it that I need to plan the app using Shad CN components and put the whole plan it generates inside implementation.md. I then gave it the PRD for the app and what it was going to do. Claude Code went ahead and using this MCP server, generated this implementation plan on how it was going to be built using the MCP server. After I'm done with the implementation plan, I call the Shad CN slash command again and tell it that it needs to implement the app and tag the implementation plan. And then using this, it actually goes ahead and implements it using the Shad CN components. The reason why it's so effective is that the Shad CN MCP server contains all the context for all the components. And in the plan, it basically states that whenever it needs to plan or execute, meaning apply the Shad CN components, it always needs to use that MCP. So it always has the context on how to do the implementation and therefore the chances of 
errors are reduced by a lot. I'll link a video in the description for its complete installation so you can set it up for yourself. Now this is the dashboard that it was able to make using the Shad CNMCP and you can see for yourself that it's much better and much more organized. If I had done it without the MCP, I would have had to organize a lot of things manually. There would have been overlapping elements and I would have had to fix all of that. But here, everything is working. Even dark mode and light mode have been implemented properly and that wouldn't have been possible without the MCP server. But now that you've actually built and organized your site, what you can do is start customizing it. So, the site that I use to customize the Shad CN UI components is called TweakCN and it's a really amazing site where you can basically just go ahead and either choose from a pre-made set of themes or create your own. For example, let's say I like this theme and I want to go ahead and implement it on the app I created. I can just go ahead and copy this CSS and you can see that I gave it to Claude Code and this is what it gave me in return. You can see that the theme was correctly applied and it really is that easy to get a design language of your own using these Shad CN components. Now what if you don't want to create your own designs or don't want to implement the Shad CN components? What you can do instead is take already existing designs and their structures and basically just copy them, then start implementing your own data from there. To do that, your best bet is using the Firecrawl MCP. What this MCP does is crawl the site and fetch all of its metadata, the image links, the animations they use, everything. Using that, Claude Code can actually clone the sites. As you can see, the Firecrawl MCP has been added to Claude Code. I came back and told it that I wanted a one-to-one -one clone of the Firecrawl site itself and it went ahead and started implementing it. This is what it came up with. The structure and the elements that were used were cloned, but the colors and the styling were a little bit off. So I think adding a screenshot with the prompt would improve this. I've also used this before and we tried to clone the Obsidian website with this. It worked really well on that. You can see the result right here. This is what it cloned and it's a much better clone compared to the one it did here with Firecrawl. I don't know why it didn't clone it as well here, but still, this is your best bet for cloning one-to-one -one sites because of the metadata. But let's say that if you want to clone Figma designs instead of actual sites, then you can use the Figma MCP server as well. The Figma MCP server is really cool because you can just open up a Figma design, copy a link to a selection, and send it back to Claude Code. It will actually clone that design and make it exactly like the Figma file because essentially you're passing the Figma metadata of the design. I'll link an installation guide for both of these MCP servers and you can try them on your own. That brings us to the end of this video. If you'd like to support the channel and help us keep making videos like this, you can do so by using the super thanks button below. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.